Did we get the short end of the stick? Gavin, please, not another word. Shouldn't we discuss it? The fact that you were wrong? Maybe I should assume leadership from time to time. And I say it with no ill will against you, my friend. I still enjoy working with you, make no mistake. But your anger is a bad counselor. Oh, I'm so disheartened, Gavin. I can't even respond to that condescending statement. Well, at least he paid us enough to drown our sorrows in cheap beer. You don't even drink. And you look like a man who needs twice his usual dose. People are coming. I don't want to talk to anyone right now. Those guys! How far is his wards? Just how many of you are there? What are you doing here? Where's Alfarius? Hey, before you get too worked up, we didn't beat him very much, we just... Who paid you to do this to him? Non-disclosure agreement. We can't reveal the name of our client. Are we that foolish, Gavin? Really? After what just happened, that man doesn't deserve your loyalty. Tell us where he is. The worthiness of our client is of no consequence. It's principle, Derek. And this is what I get for teaming up with an ex-monk. I suppose this means we'll have to beat the answer out of you. Don't underestimate us, whelps. And I'm supposed to be the short tempered one. Gavin, I'm taking over as leader. You're demoted. Just act like decoys, guys, and I'll do the rest. Get too cocky. Darkness before dawn. Uh. 
I will show you how it's done. Where is Alpharius? Alpharius? We will not reveal. We delivered him to a priest named Bon. He's further along the path. How did he...? That jerk swindled us. Kick his butt while you're there. Derek, secrecy! Stuff it, Gavin. The man doesn't deserve our loyalty. And there goes our integrity and professional reputation. No time to lose. Let's go. That wasn't very honorable, now was it? We're mercenaries, Gavin. We do this for money, not honor. Besides, if those guys are going to free Alpharius, we can capture him again later and negotiate a better deal. Very crafty, Derek. Do you see now why I'm better fit for the role of leader, Gavin? I'm not enjoying this as much as I thought I would. Maybe it's your old bones, you know? Every time Zaroff punches you, there's this ugly cracking sound. And for some reason, it just keeps ringing and ringing in my ears. <sighs> I hope I never get old. <sighs> it took me some time to realize what Celine was doing in Jagholm. Why she took so many risks going through the pass of Ophara. She was trying to get to you. And why? Not to drop by and say hello, of course. We both know that Celine, for all her grand gestures and heartfelt tirades, has the cold heart of a calculating witch. She went to you because you had something she needed. Uh, 
You know something about a cure to the corrosion, don't you? As I've said, this little rough and tumble isn't bringing me as much joy as I thought it would. So, I've done a bit of... Do you know what that is, Alfarius? Selene. In your place. So you see, there's only one thing left for you to decide before you die. Would you like me to get my answer through Selene or through you? Either way, you'll die. <laughs> Make no mistake. You know I'm not lying. I'm a paragon of truth. So, my old friend, which will it be? Boss, somebody's coming. Oh, then by the gods, chop him up or throw him off the cliff. Can't you see I'm having a moment here? It's the priestess from Jagholm. The one you called the Mad One. Selene! <sighs> On a silver platter? As if the gods heard my wish. <laughs> Let him go, Vaughn. Why, for your head on a pike, my dear, I will. Hey! Or I guess I could settle for something a little less ghoulish. Like... Where can I find a cure for the corrosion? Selene, don't say another word! I'll make the choice easy for you. Either you talk... Or our friend Alfarius here loses his head. Zeroff, on my signal, chop, chop, choppity chop. Vaughn, you will regret this. One. Don't say anything! Selene! Two. Okay, we're at two and still no answer. Oh, I must say I'm disappointed. He's your master, Selene. Like a father figure. And? It's... I'm the man you want. I'm a survivor of the corrosion. No! Huh? What? You? The vagrant? You can't be serious. You? That's the big secret? The secret cure for the corrosion? <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I suppose I'll have to get the answer the hard way. Zaroff, I changed my mind. Kill them all, except for the mad one. Make sure she watches while you kill her bodyguards. Let her writhe in the guilt. With pleasure. Just act like decoys, guys, and I'll do the rest.
prayer for your wayward soul. some help over here. Really? Must I do everything, Zeroff? Looks like I'll be the one making you cry, Selene. the will of the gods. I will commend your soul to the gods. Want me to put a cap in his head? Creeps come at a discount. No need, Fallon. Uh, he's a monster. He'll try to have you expelled and executed, Selene. We can't allow it. No. He won't talk about what happened here, because it means people finding out I defeated him. Again. Right, Vaughn? <coughs> Wretched peasant girl! Leave me alone with him. This isn't working. Seven years of jealousy and hatred for a knee in the dust. What happened that day was not natural. You cheated! And now you volunteer to find a cure to the corrosion just to compete with me? In the hope of some sort of rematch? Don't flatter yourself. I only volunteered because I know that only I can save the world. The world. But does the world need the Sanctorium in its current state, Vaughn? Haven't you seen the faces of the people in Jagholm? We could do better. Don't you think? We are the gods chosen! The Sanctorium! Without us, Herion is doomed to fall into the hands of the Archolites! Why do you care about what these people, these peasants, think? 
They're supposed to serve us! No, Vaughn. It's the other way around. We are supposed to serve them. Help them reach the gods, not use them like a human ladder. Just the same way we're supposed to revere the crystals, not pillage them. I don't understand. You're a fool, but you're not stupid. You must have felt it too. The magic is disappearing. If we don't do something, we'll lose everything. I don't understand a word of what you're saying, mad one! You don't have to hate me. I'm not your enemy. I will... Once again, you arrive late. Don't push yourself, Alfarius. Those guys really did a number on you. The cathedral isn't far from here. You must... Not now, Master. Let's find a place where you can rest first. And everyone? I think we need to talk. It's time you know what's really happening. Let's find a place for Alfarius to rest first. to have this talk much later. But given the latest developments, I think it's time you learned what you're really getting yourselves into. Listen now, my children. As we reveal to you a secret of the utmost importance, perhaps the most important ever bequeathed, the Sanctorium is corrupt. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I'll have you know, this information is of the highest importance. The Sanctorium, the embodiment of the gods on Hyrian, is corrupt! Old news. Yeah, don't take this the wrong way, but everyone knows that already. Except for you and one or two village priests here and there. Everyone either fears or hates the Sanctorium, usually both. But it's not like they have any other choice. Without the Sanctorium to petition the gods, there's no magic. Without the mining of the crystals and blessing of the Sanctorium, no magic. At least they contribute to the war effort. Okay, now that's cleared up. Next step. I'll take it from here, Master. <sighs> the Sanctorium isn't just corrupt. It's completely lost its path. To the point that the gods themselves have turned against it. The gods, huh? And how do you know that? Ten years ago, they asked me, personally, to set things right within the Sanctorium and save the world. Okay, now that... that's new. <laughs> You're kidding, right? No pupil dilation. She's not lying. What do you mean, the gods asked you? When I was just a little girl, the gods came to me and asked me to save the world from a blight that would consume everything. <laughs> <laughs> nice! Oh, this is gold! Who would have guessed? The priestess has gone completely nuts! This isn't a joke, it's important! I think what my mistress is saying is that she would have an easier time suspending her disbelief if you could show some proof of your assertions. As it should be. But I won't be the one to convince you. Darian will. What? Why me, Celine? You can ask me a lot of things, but how do you expect me to swallow this whole? How do you expect me to defend you when... when... I don't even believe you myself? I'm not asking anyone to believe me without proof. But you will eventually realize that I'm telling you the truth. <sighs> I suggest we resume this conversation later. The snowstorm seems to have died down. We still have a long way to go to reach the cathedral. What cathedral? The sacred cathedral of Ulacaris. A sacred place that has been lost through the ages. A place of unfathomable power. Finding it will be the crowning achievement in my tortured existence. Darian, try and remember what happened in the Elon mines that day. That's all I need you to do. Okay. Now my interest is peaked. What about the cathedral? And Oberos, 
How does he fit into all this? And about this lost connection he told you about? All answers in due time. But the wait is killing me! I will commend your soul to the gods. I should have started my story from the beginning. Darian, do you remember the time I saved you? Back in the Elon Mines? Uh, again? What is there to say? You used magic to save us all. It caused quite a fuss in the village back then. What happened exactly? We were stuck in a crystal mine with all the other miners when the Gurn swooped in. We were no match. I wanted to play the hero, and I only put everyone's lives in danger. All of us thought we would die. Until Celine came and saved us all. She just stormed in, throwing fireball after fireball. She'd never even used magic before, so it came as a shock to everyone. It was a joke for many years in the village that a young girl saved a dozen burly miners. How old did you say she was? Twelve. Her magical powers were the perfect excuse for our mother to send her to a convent. The Sanctorium could never have turned down such a talented sorceress. Everyone in the village just went on and on about how Selene was a god-sent miracle. Oh, I'm sure that finding a tutor to train her in the art of magic is a miracle in itself, especially in a small farming village. Uh, that's the thing. Selene never had a tutor. She learned on her own. <laughs> she learned magic on her own. Oh, please. Wait. Really? Yes. But that's impossible. There's no such thing as a natural magic user. Even prodigies undergo extensive training before they can use magic. And I should know, I was one of those prodigies. It would be a lie to say I had no teacher. The voices... taught me how to use magic. The voices? What voices? What are you talking about? Mom and I decided to keep it a secret from everyone. Even from you. She didn't want people thinking I was mad. 
But... I was... 12 when it first happened. I was working in the orchard when a crystal near me began to glow. Just like that, something flashed before my eyes and I blacked out. When I came around, the voices were there, talking. They were kind. They explained to me that I shouldn't be afraid because they had come for a reason. They had a mission for me. They didn't tell me what it was then, but I trusted them fully. I didn't panic. It just felt safe. One step at a time, they told me what to do. The gestures, the breathing, the mental conjuring. Learning to use magic came simply and naturally. It was amazing. I felt guided, strong, all-powerful. And most of all, I felt love. I didn't even have to ask the voices who they were. I knew it was the gods. Celine, I... I swear you'll understand everything. Just give me some time. When Oberos mentioned your lost connection, was he referring to the fact you weren't hearing the voices anymore? Maybe? There's more to the story, but... If yes, then that would mean that Oberos... ...is linked to the gods, somehow. Yes, that's why I need answers from him. Let's press on. Great things await us. Follow my lead and we'll get through this. Don't worry, I got this! Didn't you wonder how I knew you were in danger in the mines back home? The voices warned me. And they also warned me that my life would change in the aftermath. So, when Mom sent me to the convent, I didn't fight her. The voices told me it was supposed to be that way, but they didn't tell me what would happen afterwards. Once I joined the Sanctorium, my magical abilities were noticed quickly. For my tutors, it was inconceivable that a farm girl could learn such complex magic on her own. They kept pressuring me to tell them that someone, a rogue priest, a sorcerer, they insinuated many things and hated that I wouldn't confess. As a consequence, I was severely punished. And your ethereal friends, those voices, 
Where were they during all of this? That's when the situation became increasingly difficult. As soon as I left the country, they suddenly fell silent. Aha. Uh -huh. It was a terrible time. I was alone, ridiculed for my upbringing, and singled out because of my gifts. Every day I called to them, prayed to them, implored them, and I was caught doing so. The word spread fast. The tutors quickly chalked me up as some kind of crazy genius. The fact that I was talking to myself was proof I was special. Is this why Vaughn called you the Mad One? Yes. From then on, I was a misfit. It had some advantages. The tutors stopped mistreating me. Eventually, they lost interest in me. I was left alone for a long time. Until? Oh, until I arrived, of course. <clears throat> a special pupil needs a special teacher. Why are you looking at me like that? Weren't you going to continue the story? Reminder, I'm an old man who was tortured to the brink of death moments ago. Do you really think I'm in any shape to walk and talk at the same time? Really, Darian, shouldn't I be the one going senile? You look better already. Oh, thanks. I work out a lot. Anyway, this mountain won't climb itself. A prayer for your wayward soul. Darkness before dawn. It's a good thing I found Celine at the time, else her incredible potential would have been utterly wasted. The brutal interrogation methods used by my ex-colleagues left her in bad shape. She was bitter and doubting herself. Oh now, you say that because I took it all out on you on our first meeting. That was such a long time ago, my dear. Today I can reveal that my humiliating defeat was a simple trust-building exercise. Right. <clears throat> As I was saying, Celine was beginning to think she was actually crazy. Which she's not, obviously. Luckily, she happened to meet the only man in the Sanctorium who actually knew that what she was going through was a natural phenomenon, which had already been documented several times in recent millennia. Documented? And by who? The Venatis. The same Venatis who built the cathedral we are seeking right now. And the same Venatis whose automatons now roam free in the countryside. I'm starting to see a trend there. Oh, the Venatis were a fascinating cast of prehistoric Astrians. It was common knowledge at the time that through a rigorous and ascetic life, some people could hear the song of the gods. The sound of their voices. Through the gods' council, they learned to build extraordinary buildings. Mastered the now-forgotten art of crystal growth. They could shape crystals to their will. 
Okay, now I'm thinking you might be crazy too, old man. I'm still running some tests, but this would explain my molecular structure. If this body is of Venati origin, of course. No offense, Thea, but I already chucked you up as crazy a long time ago. If my single good eye wasn't supporting my entire structure right now, I would be rolling it at you. So this... crystal cathedral... Was it built using the same technique? Crystal crew? Yes. It's a place of great power. As I said, Selene lost her ability to hear the voices of the gods during her internment at the convent. Now, following the proper ritual in the Venadi Cathedral, she should be able to hear them again and ask them for guidance. Guidance about the cure, and guidance about Oberos. It was all written on the Alabaster Tablet, remember? The thing we had to dig up with the Nekaru before we met you? Yes. It was a relic I stole from the Sanctorium the day they expelled me. They couldn't read it anyway. They considered Venatis to be nothing more than old world pagans. Just like Carnelians, huh? Soon you'll understand how that could be a problem for me, Isaurus. Mm-hmm. <sighs> this is a lot of information. I stopped following a long time ago. I'll... <sighs> summarize it for you at the end. No, it's not too complicated. It's just that I don't care. I hope this new layer of complexity won't deter you from doing your part in the bargain, Fallon. Don't worry, Priestess. The moment you waggled that key in front of my nose, I knew you were bad news. But I find it hard to resist high-risk, high-reward activities. You know what else is too high? These mountains. So let's get climbing.
A perfectly nice way to waste bullets. Darkness before dawn. I have no quarrel with you. Please go.
The other day, Korra told me you were planning to overthrow the Sanctorium Elders. Is that true? Hmm, nothing as dramatic as that. My aim is to reform the Sanctorium, not burn it down and rebuild it. Me and Alpharius have already garnered support from several people in the Sanctorium's ranks. Once we have the support of the people, the Elders won't be able to deny me a seat in the Council. The support of the... people? Wait, is that why you're making those speeches sometimes? That's what Jagholm was supposed to be? Yes. And now, Tyr Kalem, too. Aha! Uh -huh. Nice! The people need to know that someone is fighting for their salvation. That there is someone they can trust at the Sanctorium. A few villages saved, and the rumor will quickly spread. Selene will find a cure to the corrosion and become a heroic figure to the people. A savior, a saint! This... This is completely nuts. Once her status is recognized by the relevant authorities, she will reach the highest rank in the Sanctorium, and will use it to set things right. Why go to all this trouble to reform the Sanctorium? Why now? Can't it wait until the war is over? It can't wait much longer. Because... magic is slowly disappearing. Okay, I should stop asking questions. Then I'll take the bait myself. Why and how is magic disappearing? Crystals are the homes of the gods. They sustain their existence. To support the war effort, the Sanctorium has been depleting the crystal mines for decades. But that is not all. The war against the Archolites itself has caused a major wound into Harrian's magic. The Consort's continuous invocations to repel the invaders are slowly draining all magic from the planet. How can you possibly know that magic is vanishing? Did the gods tell you that too? They didn't tell me. I can feel it. I suspect many other magic users can feel it too, but are too afraid to speak up. And you just keep piling on information. This is why I must talk to the gods, restore the connection I lost. It's been years since their last message, and now... Oberos claims to be the last of their servants? There are too many unknowns. I'm not sure about any of this. They can't and they won't. Gods are a benevolent force. They will always try to help us, no matter the cost. They wouldn't have sent me if there was any other way. That's, uh, rather convenient, huh? Could a mother deny a crying baby her bosom? Impossible! It's the same relationship between the gods and the humans. The gods cannot deny us their magic. You have quite a way with words, Alfarius. Well, at least her story seems consistent. Even that Oberos fellow mentioned Selene's lost connection to the gods. Okay, now Oberos is going to corroborate Selene's story. What am I supposed to make of that? We could just accept it as fact. Is that all of this is good grief? Magic? Like everything else on this earth, is a finite resource. Keeping it alive is the gods' eternal struggle. It's not common knowledge, but there have been many, many demonstrations of this fact throughout history. Just like the ebb of the tide, the rhythm of the moons, the sun, it comes and goes. Gods sometimes enter stages of lethargy, and magic slumbers with them. Theories and lines from old books, Alfarius. Remember the Raslan Comet? That old legend? It was more than a millennium ago. It's no more than a bedtime story for children. I mean, a gigantic comet stopped dead in its tracks by a divine, mysterious power before it could crash down on Harrion? Who- I... how the hell am I supposed to deal with this? The whole time you were playing a high-stakes game right under my nose. And all along, I'm just... The sucker who wants to save his mom and protect his sister. It doesn't change anything, Darian. I need you at my side more than ever. And we are still doing this to save mom. It just so happens that the fate of the world also hangs in the balance. This is crazy. Yes, this is crazy. It's got all the ingredients. A desperate bid to save the world and take over the Sanctorium too. It's completely megalomaniac with just a zest of lost cause. Truly wonderful. 
And here I thought we were just looking for a boring old cure. Oh, now that's... that's great. That's... Do you realize how much this whole plan hangs on you, Isaurus? I do. And I stand by what I've told you. We will find the silver-haired girl. And you guys? I still don't care, by the way. I'm already wanted by most of the authorities in Harrien. Even if this Vaughn or any other fanatic from the Sanctorium tries to stop you from attaining your goal, it simply means more fighting. And I'm down with that. And I have no choice. Okay, I'm glad we're finally done with the drama. Now, can we at least push on to the final stretch of our journey? Staya, do you... Uh, what you said you'd do... The sum up, you mean? Yes. I will be able to summarize in words that even a five-year-old can understand. Make it for a five-year-old who thinks his sister's crazy. I'm glad somebody's enjoying all this. Lady, I will prepare the symbiosis. You and your ragtag bunch of misfits should use this precious time to explore the surroundings. A question first. What do you know about doppelgangers? Do you mean that Oberos fellow? I've never met such a powerful being in my life. He was even stronger than the man he stole his shape from. He was even stronger than me when he assumed mine. Now, Celine, if all that you say is true, if this really is a doppelganger, we may have another problem on our hands. Doppelgangers are by essence duplicitous creatures, but they are also supposed to be divine messengers. In the old legends, they were sent by the gods to visit a chosen one and bequeath them with power and a mission. He told me he came down here because I failed my own. Hmm, what can I say? If this is true, we're neck deep in warm ash, Selina. Mm. But then again, we're here to get our answers from the gods themselves. Let's not despair just yet. So, scram along with the other kids while I prepare everything. What now? A little comic strip? Hope it's funny. In Harian's darkest hour, a divine envoy, a herald appointed by the few remaining divines, will descend into the world to visit the Chosen. They will wear the same face. They will 
speak with the same voice, the Chosen will recognize their other half, shaped as their perfect reflection. Upon their epiphany, the Chosen will understand the true nature of their mission. What's this story about a Chosen One? Is this Herald Oberos? We're the same face. Perfect reflection. Ah, oh, it seems like your Vanitas friends here are pretty much corroborating Oberos' claims. The last of the gods' servants, was it? Sil told me Oberos was dead set on finding Korra. Can we conclude that Korra is supposed to be the Chosen One? Damn, this is getting bigger by the minute. And I still don't even think we're starting to see the big picture. The prophecy doesn't end there. It starts diverging into multiple branches. Upon failure, Arian will bleed out its one too many wounds. Both the gods and mankind will wither into oblivion. Upon acceptance, the Chosen One and the Herald will become one and the world will be saved. Upon rejection, the Herald will... decay? into a demon and set fire to the world before destroying itself. That seems completely rational. What does that mean? What's going to happen? I don't know. So, Oberos being the god's grunt is pretty much confirmed then? You guys don't look too fresh about that. And you seem like you don't even care. Meh, I don't believe in gods. Where's magic coming from then? Dunno. Can't use it anyway. And wouldn't care less if I did. We're talking about the fate of Harry in here. Look at you guys, shaking in your boots because some guy freewheeled his chisel on a stone mural a few centuries ago. There are too many coincidences to simply dismiss it. Hey, I'm just saying. In any case, God's Herald or whatever, it will make a fine trophy for my collection. Click, click, hallelujah, and kaboom. Sometimes even I can't understand what you're saying. Fallon Hildegard, Sky Pirate Extraordinaire, Dilettante, Philanthropist, and God Slayer. How grand does that sound? And this... <sighs> it's, uh... What... Ah... Uh, what... Is this? I don't know. My heart is racing for some reason. Where did... Have I seen this before? I don't know why, but... This is somehow... Painful to look at? You feel it too, Yosaurus? Sadness... Madness... Chaos... As if... The worst is yet to come. Yes, that's... Exactly it. Huh. Can you read it, Celine? Tell us what it's about? I can't... Read it. It's like the characters wriggle out of my sight every time I try to grasp them. I don't know what you guys are talking about. This is really pretty. I concur. If anything, this engraving has a comforting, homely feel. Take a snapshot, Thea. We'll probably fetch a good price for this. Felon! Oh, can't even joke around here. Maybe it's some kind of ancient magic they weaved into the carving. We should... I think we should go, and see if Alfarius has finished his preparations. I agree. What's this? Answers. Or more questions. Can you make sense of any of this? To some extent, I can read the writing itself, but inevitably lose the meaning behind it. So, what do we have here? Prophecies. Venati writings often follow diverging lines, paths. Rather than describe a unique truth, they recount all possible outcomes, as if the future was always in movement. Why call them prophecies, then? Those are more like speculations, right? There is always a component of certainty in their foretelling. 
No matter how the story diverges, there is always a foundational event at its origin. A foundational event that triggers waves of possibilities. But the rest is cryptic. Vague. This thing... It looks like a... It's the Raslin Comet. The gigantic meteor that threatened to destroy Junor a millennium and a half ago. It could be just some kind of fairy tale. Oh, the meteor exists, actually. I went to Junor once, when I could still afford it. The meteor is still there, alright. In all its glorious stillness. I've seen it with my own two sober eyes. They even put a little mausoleum there, so that pilgrims can waste money. Every civilization around the world reported sightings of the comet. Then the gods went dormant for several centuries. People didn't use magic again until the Cyrus era. It seems that the Venatis predicted the arrival of the meteor... ...and that the gods would have prevented the destruction of Harrion. It's not the only documented occurrence of godly intervention. Throughout the ages, there have been countless floods, eruptions, and earthquakes that were miraculously prevented. The gods have always protected us. But not this time, apparently. What do you know? Maybe I'm the miracle they sent. Joking about this already? Let's see what else there is. This fairy tale has a somewhat bad ending. No need to translate this one. It's Oberos's tower with fire raining upon the land. Just like he promised you back in the scrapyard, huh? Can you translate this, Selene? The Venatis have built this tower in order to... prevent the worst from happening. Upon betrayal, the Herald will seize the God Machine and... command it to cleanse Harrion. And... save it from impending doom? Definitely not good. Only a select few will survive this ordeal. A millennium of dreams will pass for them. On their awakening, they will be free. And life on Harrion will flourish. Again. So, the Vanitas have prepared a tower so that Oberos could destroy everyone in Harrion. Save for a select few. Oberos conducted human sacrifices to power his machine. It's just the same everywhere. What do you mean? That we have to stop this. We agree on that. A uh, question here. As I understand it, the Vanishes built this tower to prevent the worst from happening. What if by mistake we allow the world to end because we prevent Oberos from carrying out his plans? What could be worse than the extinction of all life on Harrion? Of all life, except the lucky few. Chosen by Oberos? I don't know. Impending doom sounds quite ominous. Maybe it's the corrosion. Destroying everyone on Harrion to preserve a few people is not the way. I agree. We are not going to let everyone die because some madman has decided to purify the world. And if this all-consuming blight is the corrosion, we still have to find its cure. No objection there. Symbiosis is ready. You probably have a lot of questions, but you will have to address them to the gods themselves. Okay. <sighs> Don't forget Selene. From now on, you're on your own. I'll be okay. What's going to happen? Symbiosis. This lotus flower. This Nulumbo Nucifera. The Nulumbo Nucifera that Alpharius has grown here is naturally attuned to the Cathedral's strong magical current. When I commune with it, I will enter a trance state in which our life forces will intertwine. Now, it's been a long time since I practiced magic, but I remember that delving to the deepest magical layers is... somewhat dangerous? It is dangerous. And incredibly painful. Painful? There's a limit to the amount of magic a body can withstand. I've trained myself to endure it, so... I'll get to it and start my meditation. We will leave now, Selena. Wait, shouldn't we just... Stay around in case she needs something? No, she doesn't. 
Even the tiniest disturbance could have disastrous consequences. She needs total privacy. Privacy, huh? Got it. Let's go, guys. The sooner we're done with this magical nonsense, the better. I'm getting bored of this place already. Look at you two guys' faces. Are you worried about me? Of course I'm worried, Celine. You're going to places where I can't help you. Where no one can help me. Come, Darian. All we can do is trust her. Easy for you to say she's not your sister. Yeah, of course it's easy for me to say. It's not like I'm a human being or anything who might get emotionally attached to the nicest people he's ever met in his whole sordid life or anything. It's... You know what I mean. Come on, Worry Ward, she'll be fine. Don't make me lie now, Celine. Oh, I know how uncomfortable you are with that. Thanks, guys. <laughs> See you soon.
another one of those golems. Oberos is trying to disrupt the ritual! The hell with this ritual! We have a situation here! I say we grab Selene and bring her here! No! Don't even think about it. A breach of concentration could be fatal. We must stand our ground until she finishes the ritual. That's up to us. Warming up. Gun loaded. Let's go! Looks like everything's coming up is Soros. Such an antique body. Ugh. 